Let's now take a look at how Newton used his laws of motion and his mathematical reasoning to discover a universal law of gravity. So the story is that while Isaac Newton was a student in university, the plague broke out. Since he came from a well-to-do family, he was able to avoid catching the plague by retreating to his home in the countryside. Now there he spent a great deal of time thinking about motion and gravity and trying to understand, as he watched apples falling from his apple trees, why it was that the apple always fell down to the earth. Why doesn't the apple fall to the side, or why doesn't the apple hold perfectly still and the earth falls up to it, for example? To understand this, Newton applied his own laws of motion that he had previously discovered. So, as the apple falls, it accelerates to earth. There is a force acting on the apple, and we know that force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Newton was able to use this, plus his mathematical skills, to deduce that as the apple is falling closer and closer to the center of the earth, the apple is going to accelerate, but this also means that as the distance between the apple and the earth decreased, the gravitational force drawing the apple to the earth must increase as well. So he wrote about a drawing power in mass, that is to say, earth has a mass, so it has the ability to draw the apple to it, but this also meant that the apple has a mass and therefore draws the earth to it as well. And that's kind of a nice way to rethink Newton's third law. For every action, or for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So the earth exerts a gravitational force on the apple. The apple must in turn exert the exact same gravitational force on the earth, but in the opposite direction. But until this time, gravity was thought of exclusively as a force that acted on the surface of the earth. No one really understood that gravity existed beyond earth. And so Newton's great insight was that the same gravitational forces that allows the apple to fall to earth is the same gravitational force that allows the moon to fall in an orbit around the earth. So this was a major jump in our understanding of the nature of gravity. And in order to understand Newton's universal law of gravitation, I think it's instructive to just kind of break it down and approach it in steps. So the first thing that Newton says is that the gravity is simply a force between any two masses. It could be an apple and earth, it could be the earth and moon, it could be a planet and the sun. It could be anything. So we have two masses here, mass one and mass two. They're each exerting the same gravitational force on each other, but they're equal and oppositely directed. And I'm just going to write the force of gravity as F sub G. Since these forces are equal and oppositely directed, that means that both masses are required to generate this gravitational force. So we could say that this gravitational force is the product of the two masses. If we were to set one of these two masses to zero, then there would, by definition, be no gravitational force between the two. Likewise, if we were to increase just one of these two masses, let's say we were to double the mass of the second object, then the gravitational force between them doubles. And notice that the gravitational force that the second mass has on the first is doubled, but the gravitational force that the first mass has on the second is also doubled, even though it does not change its mass. Another insight was that the strength of gravity depended on the distance. So as the distance were to increase, the gravitational force should decrease. So if we represent the distance with the value of r, Newton discovered that it, it is inversely proportional to that distance r, but to that distance r squared. So if we were to double the distance between the two, then 1 over 2 squared is the same thing as saying 1 quarter. In other words, doubling the distance has the effect of reducing the gravitational force by a factor of 4. Likewise, if we were to cut the original distance between the two objects in half, that has the effect of quadrupling the gravitational force between them. So to tie both halves of the equation together, instead of using the proportionality between the two, we just need to invoke a constant to bring these two together, and the force of gravity is therefore the product of the two masses divided by the distance 
between them squared multiplied by a value called the gravitational constant. Now, as you can see, it's a strange unit. It's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 cubic meter per kilogram per second squared. Or if you want to write it out longhand, you, either way, you could see it's a very, very small number. And this means that gravity is actually a, a fairly weak force. If you compare it to the other fundamental forces of nature, gravity is actually uh, kind of weak. And if you're not convinced that gravity is weak, just pick something up off the table. You're defying gravity. But that means that what we refer to as weight is really just a measure of the Earth's gravitational force on you. And, in all fairness, your gravitational force on the Earth. So we often replace the acceleration in the in Newton's second law with the acceleration due to gravity. It's always going to be close to 10 meters per second squared anytime you're near the surface of the Earth. So that's why we say that if you're standing on the surface of Earth, you are experiencing 1g worth of gravity. But for Newton, understanding the gravitational force between you and Earth means understanding the gravitational force between you and every single chunk of the Earth. Earth, after all, is not a single point. So every chunk of the Earth is exerting some gravitational force on you. And since every chunk of the Earth is at a different distance from you, that means that the different chunks are going to exert different amounts of gravity. So if you really wanted to know what your weight was on Earth, you'd have to add up all of the individual gravitational forces that each and every chunk of the Earth is exerting on you, and that gets pretty tedious pretty quickly. Isaac Newton was having none of it, and being the genius that he was, he invented calculus to represent the entire mass of the Earth at the very, very center, giving us the universal law of gravitation that says your weight is just the mass of the Earth multiplied by your mass divided by the square of the radius of the Earth, multiplying that by the gravitational constant. Interestingly, if you were to suddenly drop to the center of the Earth, congratulations, you've set your gravitational force, or rather your weight, to zero. And the reason for that is because every chunk of the Earth will pull opposite each other, and therefore they all cancel out their gravitational pulls on you, and you weigh nothing. You're also in the center of the Earth. So you're dead, but at least you weigh nothing. 